Click on the bell icon below to never miss an update from EGMAT. Have you ever wondered how did the applicants who received admits from multiple business schools shortlist the right business schools before applying to them? Did they randomly apply to 15 to 20 schools to try their luck? Or did they strategically create a list based on their career goals? Did the B-School rankings influence them at all? Or did they simply go by the brand value of the schools? If you have ever pondered about what factors to weigh in while deciding on which business schools to apply to, then this video is for you. In our last year's MBA bootcamp, Prashant Tiburwal, one of the leading MBA consultants, had busted some myths as well as shared some advice on how to shortlist the right business schools. Let's see what advice Prashant had to give to the MBA aspirants. Okay. How do you shortlist the schools? Everyone talks about rankings, right? So, uh, and all the candidates we work with, they say, uh, yeah, Prashant, I want to apply to SEEPS, I want to apply to XYZ school. Why? Because it's in the top 10. Okay. Does, I mean, top 10, so the, uh, the funny part is, if you take the four rankings, the four popular rankings, US News, Economist, Forbes, and FT, and you make a list of top 20 schools, you will end up with a super set of 50 schools. Right? So which is the top 20? There is, uh, I was looking at FT, there is there's something called Fudan University. Uh, which was not there on the rankings till now, it has appeared this year. And it is ranked better than Tepper and UT Austin and Emory. Now, if you get a, if, if you get a CMU Tepper and if you get a Fudan, are you going to take Fudan because it's ranked, it's, it's, it has 10 ranks higher than Tepper? Not really. So then don't, don't approach it uh, in a way that, okay, I look at a ranking and apply, apply to school because it is good in ranking. And that is where, again, I repeat, connecting with the school, connecting with uh, alumni is important. Harvard is the best school, ranked best consistently, no doubts about it. All of us want to get into Harvard uh, if given a chance. But should we all apply to Harvard? Probably not because, and, and I, I was happy to see that, uh, you know, a few people raised their hands, not everyone. Because we, we have to understand our own potential, our own constraints, strengths, and priorities. We, if, if a two-year MBA doesn't suit me, I may not need Harvard. I may be happy with a one-year MBA, which is okay. Harvard doesn't have a one-year MBA. So you have to assess what do you want from your MBA, not the brand, but how do you see your, your career growing after you are done with your MBA. And there is a lot of self-introspection. There is a lot of science that goes behind it. So don't just go by brands. Look at what you want. And that is an important element in your school selection. You can't, you can't really apply to a lot of schools. Uh, you know, one strategy is, okay, let me apply to 15 schools. If I get into a top five, very good. Otherwise, I have the 15th rank also. But, but how much does it cost to apply to a school? How much, uh, how much is uh, a typical US school application fee? Anyone, any guesses? 200 to $250. Yeah, so if you apply to five to six schools, you're spending a lakh just on your application. Plus, if you have not used what Sarah mentioned, the five free, the, the option to send your scores to five, uh, five schools free of cost, you will probably uh, end up spending about $35 extra to send your scores to each school, which means you don't want to apply to 15 schools. And believe me, there are candidates who come to us saying, I want to apply to 15 schools. So you should have a strategy behind it. You should have, uh, you should have a, a plan in terms of uh, what, what, are go what is going to be my spread. And of course, manage your time, because it costs not just money, but also a lot of time. So as, as we calculated, you, you, you already had just about 12 days for one application if you apply to five or six, imagine 15. So, so how many schools does an average candidate apply to? So Nupur and I are members of AGAC. AGAC does this beautiful thing called uh, the survey, which uh, so this year there were 1,000 applicants who uh, applied, uh, who, who filled in our survey. And uh, you know, they, we, we asked them a lot of questions. And one of them was, how many schools you applied to? So any guesses how many, how many uh, schools an average candidate applies to? Five. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, I wanted to uh, get a gift on this, but everyone got it right. So, <laughs> so 4.5, you can't really apply to half a school, but the point is uh, uh, that's how averages work. So uh, the idea is, yes, four to five schools. If you apply to five or six schools, if you plan it well, you should be able to get into a good school. So don't try to stretch yourself too thin in terms of time. 
plan it well, school shortlisting is, a, is very important, not just pick things from ranking and apply there. So what should be your strategy uh, around school shortlisting? First, ask yourself, what do you want from your MBA? I'll come to cost, but I've had candidates who got into a certain school and then realized, oh, it costs 1.5 CR. I can't afford it. So where, where, where was your research when you actually applied there and invested almost a lakh applying to schools, right? So you should know, you should know where you're applying. You should know how much can you afford. You should know whether you see yourself in that country in the medium to long term. You should know if it is a one-year MBA or a two-year MBA you want. You should know if uh, there is a particular career stream that you want and do you, does your, I mean, location is important again. So does your school uh, or is your school placed in a location where uh, there are enough companies to support your career plans after that? Okay, so you, you land up in a very big brand, but there are no companies around that are around uh, probably healthcare. And then you are someone who has always worked in healthcare. So you would be better off staying in, let's say, a place like Nashville, which has about 300 healthcare companies, right? We hope this video gives you a good idea of what factors to consider while shortlisting the right business schools. A high GMAT score can not only increase your chances of an admit, but it can also avail you good scholarships from your target B schools. Take a free SigmaX mock to know where you stand in terms of your current GMAT ability. Check out the link in the description below.